Well, I've learned a lot of things about trying to cut box joints and plywood. I think the idea of ganging these all together uh, with sacrificial boards front and back was a good idea and a time saver. Although, I'm spending a little bit more time cleaning up these joints than I'm used to doing with any kind of uh, jig that I've used before for cutting box joints or dovetails. So the joinery is a little messy, but I believe that is the nature of the plywood. A couple of different things have happened as the, uh, as the material went past the bit. It was pretty violent, apparently, inside there. And some of the cores inside these tongues here came loose. And I think what happened in a couple of instances is that loose piece of core shifted to the side as the bit went past. Then, as I'm looking at these, there is a core sometimes inside here that's a little wider than it should be. So I'm just using a razor knife to trim that down. Then, uh, where I've got some uh, bad areas, I'm using a file or a rasp to clean it up. Mainly though, about 90% of the time, I'm just using a 60 grit sandpaper and just smoothing the edges of these. And then I'm coming back with some 120 grit paper and just sanding it off and getting the fuzzies off. Now I've labeled these the direction that they go. And uh, they were previously labeled as side and side. But I've added the word left here and the word right on this side over here. And I've also put a chalk mark on the top edge of each of the pieces so I would remember which is the, which is the top and which is the bottom. Then to be ultra safe, I also marked along the inside edge here where my groove is going to go for the drawer bottom. Now, one last hint about making box joints with plywood, don't try to mock up the joint and put it all the way together at a right angle like this because when you go to take it apart to get ready to glue, it's going to pull the plies of the plywood apart. I learned the hard way. The best way to test the joint is put it end to end, shove it in a little bit and say, yep, that fits okay, and pull it straight back out. That way you won't tear apart the plies. So I'm going to finish cleaning up these drawers, and then we'll get ready and uh, cut the groove for the drawer bottom. With the uh, drawer parts sanded, the fitting done, everything labeled, I'm ready now to cut the groove for the drawer bottom. The drawer bottoms are going to be masonite or hardboard and what I got is 3 16 thick. Now I'm using uh, a, a small kerf blade and table saw and I don't want to go through changing it. So what I'm going to do is I've set the height for 3 16 of an inch. I've set the distance for the first cut 3 16 from the fence and I'm going to make a pass over and then I'm going to do that with all of the drawer parts. Then I'm going to slide the fence over and make a second pass to widen the groove to get it to where it fits the hardboard. So we're ready to go. And there's our first groove. Now I'm going to turn on the dust collection and go ahead and cut the rest of them. Okay, I've made the uh, first pass on all the drawer sides. So now I've moved the fence over. I've made a couple of test cuts and uh, got a fit for the uh, drawer bottom. So I'm going to cut the rest of the, uh, the pieces.
And there's my little groove for the drawer bottoms. Now I just got to cut the rest of them. Well, I'm just uh, breaking down the uh, masonite, similar to how I broke down the plywood, so I can get it into uh, manageable size pieces to get on the uh, table saw and cut the drawer bottoms. The drawer bottoms are all cut out, all set to go. The rest of the drawer parts are ready, so all that's left is to glue the drawers up. But you know what? I'm getting neighborly peer pressure. I gotta go mow the yard. So tomorrow morning, I'll glue these puppies up, and we'll see how that goes. Getting ready to do a glue up is really just a matter of planning ahead a little bit. First thing that I did was I put down some freezer paper. You can get that in any grocery store. It's uh, coated with something on one side that makes it shiny, but it also is really easy to take a dampened paper towel and wipe any glue off that you spill onto it. That way you can use it for subsequent assemblies just by cleaning up any little globs of glue. I've laid out my drawer parts in the order they go. I've got the bottom of the drawer over there. Over here, I've lined this area with wax paper, mainly just so that when I assemble the drawer and move it over here, if there's any glue on the bottom or any of the pieces of the drawer, it won't stick to my work surface. Got some paper towels, like these blue uh, paper towels. They're really absorbent. I'm going to use tight bond extend glue to give myself a little extra working time. Got a paper bowl here with some water in it. Makes it easy just to dip a rag in it and do some cleaning if you need to. And I've got a bowl here to put my glue in and my little glue brush and a little gentle persuasion if necessary. So I think we're ready to go. When getting ready for a glue up, it's a good idea to take these little uh, cheap brushes and pull any of the loose bristles out. And then just to be safe, get yourself a big old set of pliers and crimp down on it on the ferrule to help hold those bristles into place. Well, that's a lot of drawer boxes, but I gotta tell you, they went together pretty smoothly. I like this technique for making box joints, and it worked okay in the plywood, so I may do this again. Well, in the next video, we're gonna sand these down a little bit, and mainly what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the uh, slides and get these drawers mounted in the cabinets, maybe get a little bit of the uh, trim work done on this, uh, on this mobile sanding center, 
And then the video after that, I think we'll pretty much wrap things up. We'll get the laminate on the top, we'll get the uh, sanders mounted, and we'll deal with the dust collection and power to these units. So, look forward to seeing you in the next video, and I really do appreciate you watching this one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.